Hey guys, it's Nostalgio here, back with another Master Duel video. We're going to be talking about some staples today. We're going to be tier listing staples. And I got my boy Zade Slater on the video today. Say hey, Zade. What's up, guys? That's Zade. Uh, of course, channel, uh, channel link will be in the description to his channel. He makes a lot of good content over there, a lot of Master Duel now, um, but also a lot of current TCG, other games, a whole lot of content. He's a cool. He's a content fiend. He's always throwing out content. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna get into this content today. So of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all those things. And if you care to support the channel directly and like, you know, physical cards, I have a TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. You can just click on that and then check out and stuff, and it supports the channel directly. And I really appreciate it. So it costs anyway, you no money. it costs you no money. It costs you no money extra, and it helps the channel directly. I appreciate it. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the video today. Um, so we got a lot of staples. This is kind of a weird list because I just found this online. Um, so some stuff is going to be missing. We'll talk about that later at the very end of the video. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, a couple of random ones that we had like emptiness. It's at one in the game. Skill drain. DD Crow. A couple of weird things. But we'll you know maybe find some more of those staples along the way and we'll figure it out. But until then, uh, let's just jump right in. First off is um, the Ally of Justice Cycle Reader. That is a weird card in best of one format because it only really hits like Drytron like very effectively. Yeah, that's one I think I would right off the bat give that a bad in a best of one. Yeah, that's that that's like fair. A side deck staple or would be a side deck staple in this format to me, but there's no side deck, so right. Yeah, it as far as really as far as best of one, it's that card just seems awful. It just seems like it'll work one in twenty matchups, and it's just. It doesn't seem like a good idea right now. But situationally, yeah, for sure. But in best of one, uh, I don't know. Um, but we'll see, though, because... uh have DD Crow almost every time. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. I would even rather have that, like, in the best of one main, like, in the Drytron matchup than that. Just because of, like, how often, you know, the other card would suck. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll give that bad. Although, it is notable. Um, I think... Like, uh, so Matt, uh, my brother, we, we were talking about this and he's on some groups and stuff and, uh, they were talking about doing tournament stuff and they, uh, ran a poll and it was like 95%, Hey, we should play with side in best of three and just like play it in discord and stuff. So maybe, you know, if, if tournaments do take a best of three kind of position, this will change from bad to situationally good, but for now bad yeah. for sure. in a best of one for sure. Um, solemn strike. That card's good. I love that card. I, I love, love that, that card. card. Any trap deck. Any trap deck, you should be playing it. Especially, like, uh, I was playing Eldlich, and I would, like, activate Conquistador, and then chain um, Eldlixer, and then they'd be, like, Maxi or Ash, and then I'd be like, Solemn Strike. We're playing the game. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about how powerful it is against the Maxi <laughs> it's in that scenario. It's, like, what you need, because otherwise they're just, like, Pot of Greed. And it's, like, uh, and it's on their and turn, so they're drawing. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, like, not a trade-off I would trade. So I think, in my opinion, I think... Like, any deck that plays a lot of traps needs that card, or, like, probably should play that card. It's on the higher tier of trap cards, in my opinion. Yeah, if this was, like, a tier list for trap decks, that would be, like, staple staple. Yeah, agree. Every deck can't really, like, facilitate it, so it's just really good. Because the decks that it can, it's, like, insane. Mm -hmm. Also, synergizes really well with your floodgates and cards like Torrential that blow up the board. Yeah, for sure. They, they try to negate, and you just chain strike, negate what they're negating. Helps yeah. you play going second in a trap deck. It's pretty so crazy. Good. It's really good. It actually is what you need for Eldritch going second, like a lot of the time. Like the TT uh, Torrential, or uh, the TT Torrential, TT Strike, it's been incredibly powerful. So yeah, really good is definitely fair. I don't think this needs situationally. Really good is good. Um, Transmigration Prophecy. That's an odd one. That card's garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's just straight bad. Um, I mean, it has, like, a couple neat applications, but I would still rather just, like, play DD Crow, I feel like. Yeah, every card <laughs> like in way more. so far is, like, inferior DD Crows. Yeah, that, it's, it's weird. Or, like, situationally better DD Crow, but not ever better in the bad situation. That didn't, that was a bad way of wording that. Oh, well, who cares? <laughs> um, what's this, Summon Limit? That card's really good. Uh, I would have to definitely say I'm situationally good, though. That's what I was about to say too. This it's a strong card, but this game there's just better floodgates. Like yeah, skill drains are three. Yeah, and you don't have like the the big upside of being able to side it in just going first. You have to play in a best of one, which means half the time you're going second. The card's gonna be ass. Yeah, they already have the board. What's it doing? You have to then have cards to break the board and then flip that and stop the reestablish. Which right, it's kind of asking a lot. 
It is. It's it's asking for a lot out of that card. So definitely situationally good. Honestly, it almost hits niche. But like situationally good, I think is fair because the card is like a pretty dumb floodgate. Yeah, Do you if agree? You see it going first, and if you set it, you're in a very good spot. Right. Mm. Yeah, would, it may may like I could see a case where it'd be niche or not good right now, but I I, I think it'd probably comfortable that it's situationally good. All right, the we'll, card's really strong. We'll stick it there. I think that's a good place. Um, next is Gamma Seal. Gamma Seal is a good card. I like I would oh. probably say situationally good for that too, but like. It's for really this good. one, are we looking at just Gamma Seal, or I guess the Kaiju like engine as a whole? Um, well, there's no other Kaijus on the list, so I would say this is probably counting as just Kaijus in general. But we could of, just like, like call it Gamma Seal. Engine. Gamma Seal is like a good card, but if you're just like thinking in the broader scope of uh, just like the Kaijus, I think in general in this type of best of one format, the Kaijus seem very high impact, honestly, because. A lot of other hand traps are very specific. Stuff like Droll is good against specific decks, and then stuff like uh, Valor Imperm will hurt some decks a little, hurt other decks not that much. And, like, uh, VW isn't really stopped by a Valor or an Imperm, but a deck like uh, Tri Brigade is. But the Gamma Seal or any other Kaiju, you can put that against almost any end board. You're against Striker, you can Kaiju their uh, Link so their Ray doesn't float, their Widow Anchors are off. Against Eldritch, you can hit the Golden Lord. Against VW, if they don't use the, uh, what's it called? If they don't use the VFD yet, or if they have like a Shenshin on board, you can clear that. Right. If any matchup can get hit with it. You hit the It uh, just one for one's really Tritron. strong thing. Against yeah, Eldritch, you take it off the board and they like their traps are bad. The fact that there's so many different ones too make them like incredibly versatile. Like, if your deck has trouble getting over big monsters, you can play the Gamma Seal because it's got the lowest attack points. If you're afraid of like the Wind Barrier statue being played in Tri Brigade, you play the Gadarla. Yeah, you play the Wind exactly. One. If you're a light and dark, like Chaos uh, deck, you can play the light and dark ones, respectively. Mm -hmm. which, and like, they can I be searched too by like a lot of things. And discarded off uh, Chaos Space, banished for the summon of cards, added right. off um, Chaos Ruler. They're, the light and dark are very versatile in that sense, too. So I think that I would put Kaijus in really good just because of the versatility and, like, the strength in a best of one. Yeah, I guess if we're counting everything, it's pretty safe. And honestly, like, but the yeah, cards are almost never really, like, bricky, like, in hand. I mean, obviously, they're bricky going first and stuff, but, like, they um aren't, like, it's just one card. You know what I mean? So, like, if you play it in a deck that, like, has a good engine and stuff, like, it's not going to, like, kill you. Like, playing one set of that is going to be fine, you know? And if you draw two, it's an extender, because if your opponent controls a kaiju, you can special right. a kaiju to your field. Yeah. Yeah, that's and fair. Kaiju really good. Is that's fair. Yeah, Slumber is good. That card is really good. That card, I was playing uh, against Tri Brigade. Me and Trent were tra testing a bit, and, like, I would Slumber his board, and it just felt so good. Like, that card trades so well with something like an Opelousa. Same with yeah, that's for another sure. thing kaijus trade really well with. Instead of getting three of your cards negated, you just tribute. Yeah, for sure. Uh, those cards are solid. They are good, and uh, it's it's like weird in best of one that they're still good. But I've uh, I've like every testimonial I've heard on like playing kaiju's has been positive. Like uh, like Matt's been loving them in one. Sky Striker. You know, yeah, he was so telling like, me about it because I got his list, which I think I actually posted today. Yeah, uh, I saw it. The yeah, seals are really strong in that. Mm -hmm. The next one seems like a cool card, Shifter. Shifter is definitely niche. niche. It's definitely niche. It's like it is situationally good, but like it can be played in three decks, <laughs> and we don't have one of them. We don't have two hundred. Yeah, the, <laughs> the best decks that can utilize it aren't currently in the yeah, game. Yeah, it's just like Madolce. What else is like in Thunder Dragon? Thunder Dragon pl can play it very effectively as well. It's really just those but, two but, that I can think of in the in the current meta. You have to play pure Thunder Dragon if you play it though, and with all the current cards we have in this, I would game, probably rather play Thunder I feel like Dragon. Pure League. is not the way to go with Thunder For sure. Dragon. Sixty J sixty card or um the Link or like Dragon Link with like the Thunder Dragon engine seem they both seem better than the regular like just forty a card more generic uh, and, engine and impactful. Yeah, in Snow, I I mean Snow sixty card is just like that's how I would want to play Thunder Dragon. I would think, but. Not always, you know, whatever, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I, definitely the card's niche. Because in the decks that it's good in, it's phenomenal. Uh, like, Madolce? Dude, that card's insane in Madolce. And Madolce is like a solid deck. The, um, if you're going second also and you have Shifter, and you Shifter them, 
it's on your turn, it's going to turn off their max C because max C has right. to be sent to graveyard as cost. Right. But if you're going first and you lead with shifter because you're going to have to or you're going to put monsters in grave They have to chain the max C right there. They can chain max C to that, yeah. But then you can, like, stop and then they neg. You know, like, if you yeah, have anything be, else. They have to try to kill you under shifter. Right, yeah, it's it's but tough. It's, it's really cool. Your max Cs are dead. Yeah, for sure. You're... Your own max C. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely niche. It's definitely niche, but it is definitely good when it's good. It's like we it's like near, niche is kind of a weird um category to have in but like it's fair. It's fair. I think it's good. I I think uh D shifter is crazy when it's crazy. I I've been blown out by that card like so many times. In like current <laughs> TCG with uh Fluanderies, dude, and we're going to get that deck soon. I I really feel like they'll update um the new new sets soon. I think they'll give us Brave when uh, when Grand Creator comes out. I hope so. Me too. That'd I made really PK, cool. so I I really hope um we get Brave. <laughs> that would be dirty. Imagine we get PK and DPE or uh, Brave and DPE. And I'm just like, ooh, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> is that good? Um, all right, Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is a weird one. Lightning Storm is a oh, very weird it one. It is a weird one to me too. It's like it's like cool, but. At the same time, uh, like if you draw it, not turn one going second, it's like usually gonna be bad. Yeah, most like if you're playing a trap deck in this format, you play a lot of cards that like stay face up. If you're playing Eldritch, you have stuff like Skill Drain and some combination of Rivalry goes and there can be only one. You have the Curse Eldland, and so mm -hmm. oftentimes turn zero once you like play, you're turning off your own Lightning Storm. Right. Striker has their multi rolls and their area zeros and VWS Chuchi. Yeah, so, like, turn zero is the only time you can activate it. And then if you're playing a danger deck, you can't draw into it off of dangers and it'd be live like you could a uh, Feather Duster right. or a Regeki or Twin Twister or stuff like that. Yeah, I I think I think it's weird. I honestly, I would probably put it not good enough. That's, like, honestly what I think. I, I think the card's good, but, like, in best of one, it's just it's really inconsistent. It it just doesn't seem yeah. like a card I'd want to main in a best of one scenario very frequently. I played it like a little bit at first because of staple, like because I only had like you know not enough ultra rares, but like I don't yeah. think it would land in any of my decks currently. Same. I played it for the first couple matches I played because I hadn't had anything else unlocked yet. But now that I have stuff unlocked, I'm not touching that card. Yeah. Um, Upstar Go Goblin. I'm gonna put it in really good. I I think that's good. Like I I almost want to call it staple staple, but it feels weird because like modern Yu-Gi-Oh is not really forty card decks like all the time. But it is kind of like we're not playing like we don't have DPE and Dragoon, so we don't really play like that many like brick engines. So I feel like Upstar would definitely fit on a lot of things. I think like it. It almost deserves I would staple, call staple. It staple staple. Honestly. It, it deserves if you it. Own three Upstar with it being ultra rare. It's a little hard to yeah. Get, it's expensive. If you have it, play it in every deck. I think there's even a case to play it in sixty. Because <laughs> Jesse you're Cotton, baby. 50, <laughs> I, I like the logic. Then you're playing a fifty-seven card deck, but you still get the sixty card deck payoff off with the grass. Of, uh, and also, like drawing Upstart isn't. It's you're like you're gonna cycle through a card, but that's also giving you one more engrave for snow if you didn't draw the uh grass is greener. Like you're just still fueling the grave for snow. Yeah. And so like dead cards like that that just blank cycle for one are really strong. And then in other decks they're insane where if you're playing striker it's a spell engrave. If and uh if you're playing like VW, that deck's inconsistent sometimes. Yeah. Being able to play thirty seven cards is nice and then being able to like call loon first, get a choochie out of deck, lower your chances of drawing bad and drawing into a name. Going right. first, it helps you see Max C more frequently. Cards just, it seems very, very good to me. I wish this card was at three in the 37 TCG. cards. I would, uh, I really wish this card was super rare. I, I don't, it's kind of insane they made it ultra rare. It's so expensive. And but they made all I get the it, I get super it. rare. I know. I, it's it's very weird. It, it seems like it should be, it should have been an SR, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Cause a lot of decks would like really benefit from it. So I, I definitely like would say my initial thought to really good was mostly because it's so expensive and I like don't have access to it, so it hasn't been good for me. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's probably a staple staple more than in like most cards on this list. For sure, I'm I'm sad I can't get that card. There's other ultras I gotta prioritize. <laughs> yeah, I can't be buying that when I need like engine ultra rares and like extra deck ultra rares and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. It feels like flavor. It feels like added on flavor like spice in the deck. And it's not. <laughs> it's it's not. <laughs> it doesn't deserve that. But I love I love that card. Um, TC Boo is a weird one. That's that's niche. It has to be right. I guess like it could be situationally good, but I'd probably call it niche. 
Yeah, because almost synonyms. They are. They are for sure. But uh, <laughs> niche is like I. So how I was thinking about it is like situationally good can be fit into more decks. Niche is more so just like it works in only a f- like an, a specific a, type of strategy. Right, because like you can only play it in like Eldritch and Prank right now, like the TC boot, and maybe like Eldritch Dogmatica. Not yeah, Eldritch, no, um, the Invoke Dogmatica. Striker can play it, but it's just not like crazy. I've seen gotcha. this playing it. I, so I far, have, though. I have, uh, I actually haven't seen it in Striker yet, but I, um, I, be- I would believe it. I, I think it would, uh, it would probably be Kurt. Le- it would be okay to talk about the uh, Gozen and Rivalry here too. I kind of look at those three traps as like almost they are the pretty same similar type of trap. Yeah, the it's like when really you're like picking about... one of them, uh, like which one works the best in the deck. Like it's kind of weird. And works best against the opposing decks. Yeah, and the the beauty of those cards to me in a best of one that would make them stronger than other floodgates is the fact that they also work as board breakers. Like we were talking about a. Uh, the fact that we have Skill Drain and Solemn Strike earlier, if you draw a combination of goes and Strike or goes in uh, Skill Drain or call by uh, Rivalry with Skill Drain or Strike, you're still able going second to use those to break a board and then like lock right. someone out of the duel. Yeah, and for that sure. makes them seem like really good to me, but the fact that they're not really like... There's not a lot of decks that can truly play around with them. Like uh, you can play their exactly. can in an Eldritch deck... But if you do that and you have Golden Lord, you can't summon Conquistador. And so your opponent can't play, but neither can you. It's just like makes it like niche to situationally for me. And I think Gozen and Rivalry kind of fit in that same niche box. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, the only decks that I'm really seeing that are like playing them, uh, I've seen like, like you were saying, Eldritch. I've seen Eldritch people playing like just as many Floodgates as they can, just playing like an amount of these cards. Um, but the only other time, like, Gozen is, has really seen play, like, against me was with uh, Sharks. But, like, Sharks mains it. And that, that it's insane with Shark. Because um, Kragan, Stealth Kragan, like, uh, makes everything water so that they can't summon. Oh, that's cool. That plays insane. I didn't insane. Even realize that. Yeah, that's, that's, so like, even if the deck could really play good. through Gozen, it can't now. Exactly, yeah. So, like, that's the only reason why I would say, like, Gozen is, like, cause, just because Gozen has, like, a dedicated deck that it fits in. You know what I mean? But, like, this isn't, like, yeah. a tier list. I'm not, like, rating them as better than the other or anything. But I'm just saying that's, like, one added, like, random thing for Gozen. It's just, like, one deck that, like, loves it. But other than that, they're all, like, really similar. Like, they are all, are all a floodgate that any deck could realistically play, but only a few decks will realistically play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so and I think this is hard because a lot of decks that... A lot of decks have a lot of ways to play through them. Their can is the most popular one, but almost any deck can put two different types out and then make a Nightmare Phoenix and clear it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of decks can play around it, like, with that. But I, I'm not seeing, like, too much... Like, Phoenix doesn't really fit into every deck anymore. I feel like uh, I feel like it did before, and it doesn't really seem to as much anymore. That's fair, honestly. And but it's, it's like... Can't that's still, like, a... F- yeah, yeah, that's, like, a fair, um... Like... That's honestly like a, a fair enough reason to fit uh Phoenix in your deck. Like the fact I that cards like that exist. I play it cuz I play the 60 card and uh I'm afraid of skill drain and other floodgates and if you uh, are under skill drain you can make Phoenix pitch and then chain snow to banish it to clear it off your board to force the resolution. You can also chain snow to banish it if they try to imperm veiler it. So gotcha. that's like the only reason I'm really on Phoenix right now but like that's in a specific deck not in like every deck. Yeah. That makes sense. That's uh I like that uh in that deck. That sounds cool. With the snow. That's pretty dirty. <laughs> it's nice. It clears back a real nice. Nice. Um <laughs> Phantasme. That's a weird one. It's... I'd call that not good right now. There's too not much, good right uh, now. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's too much sense. like back row decks and diversity and a best of one for that card to really flourish this moment in time. Yeah, and Especially even if you DW, uh you run in a muck and Eldlich. I was about to say some of the best decks like don't even really care about that card. Like uh like VW and Eldritch, <laughs> those pretty perfect uh examples. I, there's a world where you can call it niche, just because uh if you're playing a Dragon Link variant, you could search, you search it off Brotar. Brotar. Yeah. So you could like maybe think of it as like a one of in that type of deck. When you draw it, it's gonna feel not good enough most of the time, but you're gonna occasionally search it against Sky Striker, and you're gonna blow them out of the water with it. Right, and it's it's a light, so it's like a discard off Chaos Space if you draw it. Dark, it's dark. Oh, it's dark? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That's the same. Like, it's light or dark. Allure, so. Huh? You could pitch it off Chaos Space. You could banish it off a lure. It's graveyard right. fodder for guys. Yeah, it's not bad. 
Um, I, I would say not good right now is pretty fair though. Uh, I feel like it's like, I feel like niche, uh, like it almost fits in the niche category, but really only for dragon, but like dragon's kind of mm. weird. Cause it has like a million different ways to play it. So like, yeah, it almost fits in a niche, but I'll leave it at not good right now. Right. Uh, for now though, that sounds good. Um, dark ruler, no more. That's a weird one. Cause it doesn't like that card sucks going first and in best of one droplets. I just like. I can't think of a reason to call Dark Ruler better than Droplets because, like, if you go first, like, trap, like it's a trap, and Dark Ruler isn't. Yeah, I was gonna say we should probably talk about Droplet at the same time with this card too, because they yeah they probably do serve a similar function. And Dark Ruler is way stronger going second because it just blanks the board, but Droplet is better going first and still very good going second. Mm -hmm. So I think that like Droplet is probably just staple staple. The only reason I would you agree, play 100%. it is because it's an ultra and you need to get it. And then I would probably call Dark Ruler like situationally good to niche around there because yeah, you're probably uh, situation. You're gonna play that and specifically in going second strategies. Right. And you're gonna throw that, like their don't board. need to but, kill that can still like build a board. Like go second yeah. build board, which is like weird because usually go second is kill. But sometimes it's hard to kill through like what Sometimes you have to have the Dark Ruler. Right it's, it's very true. Um, also, but, uh, Dark Ruler is a lot worse because it can't out the VFD. That's the next thing that I was about to mention was Droplets at least gives you a shot. Because, yeah. like, if they have the Chuchi set up, like, you can get through the Droplets a lot of the time. But if they, like, send a trap, then they can't <laughs> and get out of mm -hmm. here, you know? But then you have to, like, send a trap and a monster, and it's weird. I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It's a, it's a tough one. But if they activate VFD, like, they shotgun it, and then you activate the Droplets, send a trap... It plays through the Chuchi VFD and you just like get right through it and like don't care about the deck. So like I would definitely call like obviously Droplets is better than Dark Ruler, like in a vacuum overall. But uh -huh. Dark Ruler is definitely situationally better. Cause like so I'm not gonna lie, like sometimes I really wish I had Dark Ruler instead of the Droplet, because I won't be able to kill, but it's one card instead of like three cards to out a board. Yeah. Yeah. So I I like where we place those cards. Um also notable um, they're both ultra rare. So if you are going for them, you can, you can pick, you know, you get whatever you want. Like you can go for each one, uh, whatever one, but I would probably say droplets. Like yeah, droplets is more versatile. And right. in a game like this, I'd probably want to get the more versatile one. Yeah. Especially in best of one. Cause you can't really like expect for it, you know? Yeah. It's like kind of weird. Uh, mind control. What's mind control at on the list? Is it three or is it one? I don't know. Actually. I'm curious. Uh, not curious, curious enough to pull up the list. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Regardless, uh, I don't think I would really play it. Yeah, probably not. I mean, in best of one, I don't think this card really belongs in a main deck. Like almost ever, <laughs> like in across most formats, I don't think it really fits. Um, maybe like, I think, uh, back in like 2014, I played it in gear Gia because of the mirror match. Like take arsenal was, or, uh, take armor was insane. That was like the only time I can ever think that I've mained it. Cause like, I, I just don't see a, it. I can see a world where you play it in like a striker deck maybe because if you're picking go in, second in format. Yeah. If you're blinding second, you could take like one of their interrupts and then use it as link fodder with one of your cards to go into a Zeke, clear another card. It puts a spell in grave, but then it also has the added utility in the mirror match of being a starter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, taking, like, a and, guy and then just, like, uh, link off with it. And then even if you don't have, like, full combo in your striker deck, you could just, like, mind control, take a card, normal summon Ash, make Halk, and then at least try for, like, an access code play to break the board and then set some back row. Uh, Wraith? So that's the only... It huh? it goes through Ray, right? Like, if they have a link and you can take it and then you link it off, does it go through Ray? I don't think Ray would trigger, no. Right, so it, it, it goes right through it. So that's, like, actually gas in the mirror. Yeah, it, it's like a blowout. Like, I would probably side that in the mirror if there was a side, but because there's not, I would call the cards a niche at best and yeah. probably not good enough at worst. Yeah, it's like it fits into both those categories kind of weirdly. I, I feel like I would say not good enough, to be honest. Like, I think it's it's definitely niche, but I think it's so niche that it it's, like, too niche for the niche category. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's fine. Do you agree with that, then? I just looked it up, by the way, and I believe the card's at three. Because I that did is not cool. see it on the Master Duel list. That's cool. I like to see that. But, yeah, I would also agree that it's not good enough. Yeah. I, I could see it later on in time, but 
not not yet yeah and definitely um since it's at three it's definitely like a relevant um option for side deck like if that does become the standard for tournaments that would be a, a very solid thing. This definitely, this whole list changes pretty dramatically in a best of three format. So we're just going to assume best of one format because that's what the current play is. Yeah, yeah, that's what the game is. We can redo this one. It's time for the best of three if you all need <laughs> um, the information. One day, yeah, if tournaments, like if we find tournaments and it's it's a best of three, we can definitely make a tier list for best of three. That'd be cool. Probably do that. Um. Anyway, next is uh, Triple Tactics. That's an interesting card. I... I want to say, like, definitely situationally good is what is where I would think um, right off rip without any conversation. What do you think? Uh, one question before I say what I think on that is cross out on this list. Uh, this uh, it looks like this was probably made before cross out. Right, because uh, I think that talking about triple tactics called by and cross out at the same time is like. Uh, the way to go because they all similar they are similar they all have a similar function yeah they're and all for like a... anti-trap uh hand trap like and kind so of yeah i would probably put cross out in the really good section i don't right. think i could call it staple staple called by a staple staple it. called by yeah it's probably staple staple in a format with max c because it like it hits the max c it also hits the ash which everyone plays as a counter to max c right and then uh triple tactics is a little weird to me where that card is, to me, more powerful than the aforementioned cards going second. And going first can break boards against as well. hand traps that aren't max C, it's really good. Like, if they ash you and you're able to keep playing, you could just look at their hand, take Rip away the their combo. Or combo. Yeah, and then build a board that, like, stops the cards that they have in their hand. Right. But if you get max seed, it's not really doing much because you're going to look at their hand when. Do you do it before you, and try to combo, let them draw into the hand traps in their plays, or do you do it after and risk getting I, hand trapped by something they already have? I would probably um, do it, like, immediately. Like, get max seed, summon a thing, and then activate the triple tactics and try to rip, like, combo. Because then you can just stop. Like, you can know if you can, like, die, you know? like Because if, yeah, if you know you're point. not dying, you can just, like, be like, oh, okay, max C, I'm not going to give you three more cards to, to end on, like, two interrupts. I will just pass and rip one card. It seems better. And you could also, like, draw two um, to try to draw the hand traps when getting max seed. That's fair, too. If you got max seed and you're like, I don't really want to play, let me just try to draw in some interruptions. Yeah, that could be a fair way. I don't know um, how I would decide, though. That'd be, like, tough. Like, the rip would be really good as well because they would only have four cards to work with, like, with me knowing three of them. Yeah, I guess that just depends on your hand. You got max C already. You probably look yeah. at rip. For sure. And yeah. if you don't, maybe you try to draw into that. If it's if you don't want to if you don't want to give them any like cards, like the maxi likely broke even, and then because like they usually use it like when it's gonna draw in a card. response to something. Yeah. yeah. So I I feel like um I, I I feel it's it's a weird card. It's a really weird card in the format. I think it's good though because uh there's a lot of hand traps. Like definitely um at like it feels like triple ash triple max C feels really really staple. Um, to every deck because of the fact. Oh, by the way, Max C is not on here because it's been banned for like thirty years. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's another that's one staple, we'll add later. That oh yeah, staple, staple. no doubt, no doubt. But I'm just gonna I'm writing the list just so I can say it all at the end for in case people skip to the end because a lot of people like do that in tier lists. <laughs> I'm guilty you guys of are that. Monsters. Well, not you guys because if you're listening right now, you didn't skip to the end. But oh no, the people the people now right now they are monsters. The people that are listening right now, twenty nine minutes in, they're goaded. They're the best. <laughs> <laughs> They're my favorite. They're my favorite. So yeah, I, I definitely think situationally good is, re is fine for this. I don't think it quite deserves really good because it's not always going to be great. Um, but even when it's bad, it seems like it would be like solid a lot of the time. But of course, like going first and they don't open a hand tra trap, it just bricks, um, which sucks. Yeah. But like whatever. It and um, sucks. also another thing that I've noticed, this will probably change. Uh, because imperm's like so expensive, but nobody's playing imperm right now. It seems like uh, like everybody's just getting their staple staple cards, like their droplets, their called buys, their ash, max C, all of those staples, and they're putting like imperm uh -huh. to a later task. I think that'll change because I I think imperm's really good. Um, it'll def uh, I think it'll be it more yet. played, but like when we get like give us an event on Wednesday, um, and give us a bunch of like money in the game, and I, I think we'll see imperm more. Uh, like that's just my opinion. I think we'll see imprint more because that card's really. I good. I agree. I think the format definitely changes as more gems get introduced to the game. Yeah, because it seems right now, uh, like I, I'm guilty of this too. I think a lot of people didn't just hone in on one deck and make all the staples. I think a lot of people might have like 
built one deck, got just about every staple, but, like, skipped out on, like, Imperm, Upstarts, like, other really good staples that they just, like, can skip right now, and then built a second deck, too. I'm guilty of doing that. I made Eldritch and VW. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like... I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it gets, like... But, like, that's kind of a plus for this card, is the fact that, like, nobody's playing Imperm. Because, like, that, like, mm-hmm. Imperms gets through, gets through it. So, yeah, I don't think that'll change anything, but that's just, like, a key, like, like a little note to add. Um, Crackdown's a weird one to have one here, I feel like. I'd probably call that not good enough. We have yeah. Skill Drain, and so I feel like Triple if you were skill playing drain. Crackdown in your TCG list, Skill Drain is just taking that slot, like, yeah. sevenfold. Crackdown seems like a weird pick, because even in Trap decks, I wouldn't even call it Staple Staple, or even really good. I would call it Situationally Good, yeah. like, for a Trap card tier list. So I would definitely say not good enough is fair. I'm surprised this is even on the list, to be honest. Um, and there's a couple other ones down here, like Dynamiscus and stuff. Like those cards are I odd. I personally like Dynamiscus. Dynamiscus. I mean, I like it. Fire. I uh, I used it for my beginning Eldritch deck. You know, like it just cards a good, cheap, good staple. Yeah, and in that deck, you can it. discard like a trap, like or something that floats, and it doesn't even matter. So like, what do you call Dynamiscus good. then? Just not good enough, right? Yeah, now? I would definitely call it not good enough as well. Um, because it it's just like less um impactful than the other like good traps that you can play, especially with triple skill drain in the format. Like I don't know, man. The I, I feel like taking those cards are, are a little better. And if we're looking at just, like, not, like, floodgate traps, I, I feel like Imperm's better, um, TT's most likely better, Strike is better um, than, like, those two traps, like, ca- cards like Crackdown and Dynamiscus. Like, they're, like, not bad, but they're, like, you know, not quite as good. Not and and, on, and on an overall better. staples tier list, these, I would definitely call them not good enough. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, evenly match is another odd one that's kind of like situationally good, but like in best of one, like you're only gonna play that card in a dedicated go second, like blind second, in a best yeah, of one so format. I'd, I'd probably call it niche. You have to be blind yeah. second, and you also it has to be like the first thing you do because you can't commit to the board. Right. So it has and to be a go second deck that like doesn't mind not killing your opponent. You're still losing to the VFD with that card. You're still losing to like an interruption filled board because they just negate it like it might be strong yeah. against tri brigade they have to choose between revolt or Abalooza, but like a forbidden chalice makes them choose between that too yeah for sure it's like it doesn't seem in- as insane also that's the uh yeah. chalice is another card to add to the list actually honestly, that's one that we like, could have already talked about with the with the droplet and stuff too yeah a chalice i would put in really good honestly mainly I like because it. of the price the price yeah, is what sure. makes it really good it, it's, it's free. very it's, very appetizing can't afford droplet Get three rares and play them till then. That's, that's literally me in real life. <laughs> I almost want to lower evenly just because, like, I would almost never play evenly over Lightning Storm. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, right, like, I would, like, I would call that card not good enough, like, without sideboard. Because, like, it's just, it's a very odd card to play, like, in a best yeah, of one format. It's acro decks, but what do you do against combo? And what if you go first? <laughs> it's... Yeah, it, it, seem, it seems like it's not a good enough card, like, in the main deck. Because even, like, Blind Go Second, it's true. In Blind Go Second, I think I would rather play Lightning Storm. And, like, we put Lightning Storm in not good enough. <laughs> so, yeah, probably, you know, those two go kind of hand in hand here in this fo- with, best of uh, one odd format we have. With Desires being next, you just want to talk about all the draw cards? Um, Like, what all, like, uh, all the pots. Yep. Uh, is Duality yeah, on here? One th- uh, here's Prosperity. Met- two things that are missing from this are Duality and uh, Card of Demise. Yeah, yeah. Do uh, demise is actually like a super relevant like pickup right now because it's uh, a three of, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but, let's talk about so those two first since they're not on here. Um, demise and duality. I think I would call duality niche at best. For sure. You have to be playing uh, a deck that, that can't special it's like, summon. It's only true Draco right now, and then it'll be Fluanderies when we get that deck. But that's really all I can yeah. think of that wants to play that do- that card. In those decks, that's a good card. I would be happy playing it. And yeah, then it's card very good. Demise, I think is a little better. I'd probably call that one situationally good. I I agree, and I would almost niche. call that situationally great. To be honest, yeah, that's fair too. Like it's it's really good when your deck can play it, but not a lot of decks can really play it. And it also has negative like synergy with maximum cockroach. It does. It makes your hand traps not good, um, which is like weird, and and it's kind of like insane actually. But like at the same time, it's kind of cool because you can activate the max max C like with a card like Ash or something. You can't like get rid of it first unless you set it. But then you're like mm-hmm. you know spending your normal summon um, to draw one card, which is fine. But um, in like true Draco, um, when you demise, you you wouldn't want to have that like mm-hmm. max C. At least you can in chain. True Draco actually, there's instances where uh, I remember you know Froggy. 
Yeah, I remember him. Uh, oh, he's he's pretty cool, him. dude. He's like a little local legend. He's topped a couple ARGs. I don't know if he has YCS tops or not, but uh, I don't he know. He was the one that innovated the uh, extra deck True Draco deck back in the day. Really? And he played hand traps like cherries in the deck, even though he played Card of Demise. And I, I asked him why he would like play that. It seemed like it didn't synergize. You well, can just throw it but down. He, said he would just set it, draw the three, and then you can use your uh, True Draco spells for your additional summon, and then just tribute the hand trap that you set. It's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I didn't know. Um, I I see True Draco was never like big when I played because I played after that. Like, got you know neutered. Like Masterpiece yeah. was gone. A whole bunch of cards are at one. Like Dynamite's at one, right? Um, like yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's on the list. Um, the field spell, he, he, like diagram, that's a one. So like, I never really saw that deck in full power. So yeah, like the demise also, I never saw demise at three, um, in real game. Like this is my first seeing demise at three ever. And I'm that's like, crazy it's crazy. Think. I loved Draco when it was like the deck. I played the shit out of that deck. Yeah. Well, you know, I took a, like a five year break. <laughs> so, yeah. and you know, I skipped a lot of stuff. I skipped like all the U-Link shenanigans and stuff. I never saw Gumblar. You know what I mean? So there's like a lot of things that I miss. And Demise was just one of those cards that I, or things that I miss. Same with Draco. Um, but now I've, I've gotten, you know, I've seen Draco now. I still have not seen it with Masterpiece. So like, you know, still haven't seen it max power. Um, but now I'm seeing it with the, the triple Demise and like Demise is crazy, dude. Um, I was playing triple Demise in the Eldritch too. Like that card's just fantastic. It is very, very powerful. Yeah. I love it. But not every deck can play it. And that, that is true. And that's what makes it not really good. That's what makes it situationally good. Or situation. I like think uh, the rest of the draw cards, the three that are like actually there, I would probably put them all in really good. As a whole, like the pot cards are staple staple in the sense that your yeah. deck is going to play one of them at least and two of them at most. But what deck you're playing dictates which one you play. So I don't think I could call any of them staple staple. Right. Because this is not a staple staple. A lot of decks can't play it. Same with this. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it is. But um, I almost Which one like are you playing X. BW? Uh, I'm playing Desires. I uh, cause Nyan Nyan makes it like, not matter. Not nearly as bad. You put the bricks back that you banish. Um, you could put back like yeah yeah. You put back everything. Um, any one thing. Um, like off of it, which is fine. So if you the only times that like Desires ever hurts is if I had three of us of a thing. But if I even hit like the like both Chuchi, I can put it back with Nyan Nyan, and it's like not even mm -hmm. a big deal. So it's like fine in there. Um, but I think, yeah, as a whole pot is definitely staple, staple, like just pot of blank is staple, staple because yeah, almost every deck will playing. play one. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, extra is the only one that I almost don't want to call really good. Um, because it's only played in like one to two That's decks actually played. Pretty fair. That would, that would go kind of wherever Carter demise kind of like situationally like with it. Maybe above it. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of thinking that, um, like it feels kind of weird to not call extra really good because <laughs> the card's phenomenal. But, um, yeah, the only decks I can think of really that play it are like Eldritch and, Back um, row, maybe like yeah. Guru, you know, like decks Grand like Maju, that. That's like it. Control yeah. Grand decks. Maju, of course. Yeah. So like, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of an odd card, but, um, extra and desires I would call really good cause they'd fit into so many decks. Desires is I think the closest one to being staple staple because yeah. of the lack of limitation that's attached to the card. There's like a, like unworded restriction where you can't really afford to play a lot of one ofs because you're going to lose them. But when you activate the card and then you pay the cost and it resolves, there's no like lingering effect applied to you. Whereas both of the other pots, you can't draw any. Right. So you can't draw that's like BW where you draw a lot. It's going to like lower your ceiling when you resolve one. If you're playing upstart and you draw into it, it's dead. Yeah. So also extra has like to be that. like the first thing you activate, which is kind of weird. Yeah, so like, that too. It yeah, desires. It, it is true. Desires is like the most close to staple staple for sure. I'm I'm like really tempted to put it to staple staple, but not every deck can play it. I mean, a lot of decks would like would not want to play it. So, yeah, really good is good though. I, I think that's really fair for all of those those uh, cards. Honestly, all the draw cards, like everything we talked about, I, I think we placed very fairly. Uh, well, the moon's probably bad. It's I I would just say it's not good enough, but maybe bad. There was like times where it was like not bad in real game, but I can never really call it better than like droplets or chalice. Like, cause that's usually what it's going to be outing is like, you know, just force a negate or like put down, a, you know, a negate or something like put down one interruption, yeah. but chalice is uh, a chalice and droplets are both far more optimal. Like links. most of the time. 
And uh, yeah, yeah, in, in book can't hit links. You can't book an Appaloosa. You can chalice it though. So we'll see book move up when we get Fluanderies though. It'll go up to like niche. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. They play that card to dodge. To dodge. From Valor. It is very true. Although um, when we get uh, aren't we getting that card in um, uh, like the card their archetypal yeah, card that can dodge that? Yeah, yeah, we get that in uh, Grand Creators, right? Or is that after? So if- if that's when I have no idea when we get it, but when we do get it, that might take the place of Book of Moon. People might play both. I have no idea to be honest. I don't know. I uh, they definitely will play that card because you can also just like get it right off rip. Right, it's a monster, so you can just like banish it from town and then add it with uh, like when you start doing your combo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but like you would still like normal summon, activate the effect as chain like like one or two, and then the other would activate in in banished. So like you wouldn't have mm-hmm. it for if they imperm right then. So like yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I'd play like I don't know. I'm not good at Fluanderies. I never like really played that deck, so I don't know if you would play both, but um you would definitely play the new thing. So yeah, like Book of Moon might go to niche in the future, but for now it's it's fine at bad. <laughs> uh, Twin Twister isn't on the list. Looking at um, it. that's weird. Um that yeah. well that'll be right here with these two that we're about to talk about. So we can talk about that um with them. Uh, That's why I thought about it because I looked yeah. down at what was next. I write that down too. Twin Twist, but uh, yeah, I that card is good. Uh, Twin Twisters, that card is really solid. Where would you put it? I'd put it at situationally good, because uh, I was thinking that or niche because it could not also that fit in a niche right now against other decks with no side. Yeah, I can agree because uh, Twin Twisters, like it's good because it, it, but like if you're only hitting one thing, like it's good against a lot of things. But if you're playing against like let's say prank where they only set the one back row, they might have pranks too, which would make it better. But I mean like Cosmic would be optimal there. Cosmic oh, is optimal a lot of times. Pranked if they set a back row and there's uh, fusion because the fusion can yeah, only it, be used in the I main know. phase. That's why I'm saying. That's why I gave that option was that those those cards are good against that. Like. And in this yeah. game, we have so many like crazy floodgates, and it's best of one, so people aren't really playing anti spell fragrance, which makes Cosmic and Twin a little weaker to it in comparison to a card like a uh, Feather Duster, where you're gonna get immense value when Duster resolves. There's only a one of in the game that is likely to punish you for activating it, and it just seems really, really good to me. I mean, there's judgment too, judgment and order. Is order what you were saying? The, those cards are going to... Judgment is going to out Cosmic and Twin anyways, but Cosmic and Twin are going to be saved for the order to be flipped up, whereas Feather Duster can't. So they all lose Right, those, right, right, yeah, yeah. Duster they can answer to the order. To, uh, order. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, so so it's weird. I honestly, like... So I would probably put the Twin and Situationally Good almost to niche, and then I would say both of these cards are just really good. Yeah, I think Duster's the closest to staple, but I don't think I could put it in staple. Yeah, I like I this. Don't like have that card, and I want it because in the danger variants, it's a very strong card to draw into as your like danger combo yeah, progresses. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's cool in this game. Uh, like the reason I would almost call it staple staple is because it's a one of, and it's super affordable. Because like if it's just one ultra rare one of, um, it like improves every matchup that you like every back row matchup when you draw it. Like it's a blowout. It, it, mm-hmm. it really is. So it's like I put it in almost every deck just because of the sheer amount of back row decks we play against and the fact that it's just an out in your deck to skill drain. Like I wouldn't want to play right now without like at least an out in my deck to skill drain. Like kind of similar to how like Mystic Mine is in the TCG. Like a lot of players yeah, would like to play like an to out to it something. just in case. Yeah, because then if your opponent's like sitting there like for 13 turns, you have a prospect. You Like if you don't have an out and your opponent has skill drain, you cannot out it. You might as well scoop if you can't beat the card. But if you have one, like, Feather Duster in your deck, then you have a chance. And I would probably rather, like, if I'm playing one thing, like, with that theory, I would definitely play the one Duster over one Cosmic or something like that. You know so what I mean? So much more high impact. Yeah. Exactly. And then uh, if you're so I almost want to call it this, but it, it's Prosperity. If you play Prosperity, it makes that card definitely the one you play also. Oh, yeah. You're finding you get that to banish card. sticks and look at it, you have a much higher chance of seeing the card. And when you're doing that, you would much rather be seeing that than Cosmic. Because if they have the Imperial Order, they're going to use it on the Prosperity. If they have the Anti-Spell, they would have flipped it already. If they, have, The only thing you're then losing to is Judgment. But you're going to get, if they don't have Judgment, you get the much higher value of resolving the Duster. Right. It's very good. So that's, uh, that card's insane. Mm-hmm. But not good enough to be staple, staple yet. I, I, I'm, you, I feel like it's pretty good with both of them and really good. I think that's safe. 
Looks like Torrential's next on the list. Oh, yeah. Th- that card and back row, I think it's staple. But... I, I would call it situationally good, probably. Because, um, like, it's only going to be good in, like, back row decks. Like, you're not going to play, like, imagine playing combo and playing TT. Like, it'd be weird. Yeah, you're not. You're yeah. not. So, like, honestly, it probably fits in niche better. Just because of the fact it's only going to be in trap decks. But it is good in we... trap decks. I think you would say the same about the uh, Ice Dragon's Prison down there. That card... Yeah, you're not gonna. Play, it's not gonna fit into into anything, but it's, it's good. not high enough impact to play in another deck. Like, mm-hmm. if I was making room for three traps in my normal combo but deck, imperm. I'm probably gonna play like emptiness order instead. Yeah, or like or imperm because it can be a hand trap as well. Yeah. Yeah, or it can be like your sixth card, your draw card, and then you can out a uh, problem, like hit a, a hit in the gate. So like, I would probably i I would say both those in niche are, is pretty fair. Because they, it is true that in a trap deck, those are some of the cards that I'm prioritizing um, to put into my trap deck, like into the trap list. Mm-hmm. Um, Droll now, is a well, weird one. I think that's a uh, either situationally good or not good right now. The yeah. decks that people are opting to play, I think they're playing the decks because they're cheaper. Like the meta, we we're talking about this earlier. Like, yeah, stuff seems like Striker, VW, Eldritch, things that are relatively affordable to make right now and also have very strong win cons so they're like really overrepresented and they're those decks don't get hit pick. by droll at all mm-hmm. but as we get more like big combo decks into the format as people start being able to afford dry tron and like 60 card decks a droll gets a little stronger and it's an out to max c yeah yeah so you, are you saying situationally good probably or or like but niche either, i'd probably call it not good right now cards insane it's just yeah that's in the fair. current that's meta i wouldn't play it in my deck that's fair. Also, like, best of one really makes it weird. It really makes it weird. Like, but that's another card that once it's best of three, that card is really good, if not staple, staple. Yeah, well, staple and side deck for sure. Well, that's what I mean, you know, mm-hmm. for for side deck. That, that's what I meant when I say, like, best of three. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, like, it could fit in, like, really good even for, like, that. Because, like, people be maining that, like, sometimes. It's, like, weird, though. It, that would be format dependent, obviously. Yeah, 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 it depends on what decks you're seeing. Yeah, I mean, like, at, at our locals, like, that one, uh, a couple weeks ago, when I, like, last time I went, I was playing it, because the whole me- the whole meta there was just, it was, like, 15 bird up and 15 Eldritch, uh, or not Eldritch, um, Dogmatica invoked. Like, that card's insane against both those decks. So, that, I that's like a lot of invoked card. in this game, even though it's, like, still a really strong deck. I think the only uh, card is Meltdown to two. Well, uh, Nadir Servants at one. Oh, oh yeah. that makes more sense, then. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's definitely solid. Uh, it's definitely still a solid deck, but it's uh, it loses a it, it took a big big hit to consistency, like with the yeah for shit. sure. Yeah. Near to servant to one sounds actually very high impact. It's best card. <laughs> it's the best card in the deck, and uh, it's a one. So and we don't have fusion destiny in this format. So like, yeah. what else are they playing? Even what other starters do they have? It's just Alistair, I think, for the most part. That's still Alistair solid, conveniently though. loses to the next card on our list. <laughs> the Imperm, yeah. Um, Imperm, I almost, like, it's it's as close to Staple Staple as it could get, um, like, for being not considered Staple Staple. Like, the, we were talking about this earlier, literally in the video, uh, where I think this card will definitely go up in play during the next couple weeks in, in time. Like, yeah, once we have more staples. Right. So, I, I think, I like, I think it probably fits into Staple Staple, but... It, Cause it's like one of the best hand traps, um, it's, it's at least also like low like good going second. You could chain it if they shotgun VFD, mm-hmm. and it, it's a great, um, it's, it's a great like sixth draw. It's the only hand trap where yeah. if it's your sixth card, you're like, oh, okay, I'll take this. You know, trades really well with Opelousas. Trades really well with like Thunder Dragon Colossus. Just uh, it's, trades with any it's really, really negate Warlord Savage stuff like that. Do you agree on staple say, staple or called really good? I. Because really you know, good, really think, good is I think safe. Staple, I, yeah, really good would be the safe bet. I think it's pretty close to staple, staple, and the only decks that wouldn't play it would just play Valor instead. Like, uh, I think Valor would combo. go in really good for sure. Because, uh, yeah, it gives you the needle fiber combo in uh, chaos decks. It's a light. Yeah, it can be added off chaos ruler. It's, so it's like, very strong. But uh, for the most Valor part, is you're right gonna there. play we'll Imperm over too. it. Both. Most decks so will play that, it over because, like, you could set it turn one, and like it's it's solid. I think that you're right. How imperm it maybe isn't staple staple, but it's really it's quite close. close. It's really like it's painfully close. 
while we're talking about hand traps, I feel like we should address the elephant in the room with the hand traps being Ash Blossom. That card oh, definitely that's staple, needs staple. to be a staple. It outs Max and, C. That's, that's enough for me. Which Max C, I think we talked about it not being on the list already. That no doubt sure, that's staple, 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 staple. That's the staple, staple. It's the first ultra is, rare that everybody buys. Agreed. If you're getting a staple, like if you're getting not just core, that is the first one you're getting. I got it before I got the core for my deck. I was like, you know what? I'm not playing a deck without this card anyways. <laughs> Might as well. I got it the same time that I got my um my en- my engine core. So like it it's it's the go to. Like it is the go to in the format. And the only other card that I would like consider even like go to is like it's the Ash to out the Maxi or the called by to out the yeah. Maxi. Like that's what makes Ash so good is that yeah. it's like, like it's a it's a mid hand trap in like a vacuum. It's not crazy, but the thing is that it counters every deck in some sort of way at one for one trades against any matchup mm-hmm. in a best of one format that's really important but then it has the added utility of also being an out to the max c right and that's actually a huge deal because uh like designator is kind of bricky ash is not bricky ash is like at all yeah right like if you if your opponent doesn't max c you're like oh cool i have now an ad- additional um you know ash in hand for next turn so like it's it's really good. Every hand that uh going first or second, if Ash is in my hand, I feel better. I agree. That card is so good. And it's like in certain decks it's combo. Like if you're playing a deck that can utilize the tuner for Helky Fibrax, it can be a starter slash right. extender. Uh, I've if been you're using it as you summon off the trap. It lets you play sometimes with virtual world. Actually. Yeah, being it's a, a level, level three, three tuner. Summon it, proc Nian Nian and Grieve. Exactly. It's it's actually like relevant uh in that in that deck sometimes. Yeah. It being a level three is relevant. It being a zombie is relevant for the Eldritch matchup. Right, you can summon it off the things. Being a fire is good for a deck like a, what's it called? If you're playing the striker deck, you could play Hita, and you could be using Ash to make Hita, and then like right, and then go into Mm -hmm. and And then you can go into the needle fiber play from there, and then go into Selene and Access and everything. It accesses everything. It just yeah, it's a really really strong versatile card. It could be summoned off Mizuki if you're playing like a zombie deck or a 60 card variant that plays a zombie engine mm-hmm. it just it does a lot there's a lot of applications for and that uh in like eldlich uh even if you're playing like not like a link eldlich like crazy deck uh version but that card's just in your ex or in your deck you can summon it off of like sanguine and stuff and then uh link with it like even if you're not yeah. playing like a link deck you have a couple in your extra deck and you didn't hit them off of extra or something you can like play with that which is like yeah, you cool. can make level eight synchros with it using the level five traps right. level eight's the best synchro level right and the it most gives you access to that very consistent. well it's pretty good and then uh with ash in mind looking at the next card ghost ogre i think that uh that card's probably like a situationally good it's not at that best. good of a hand trap to the point where i'd call it not good right now but it has the added utility of being a level three psychic so like decks that play E-tally yeah you can utilize you can it. tell it and then like you can use it on your turn like that way as well, which is kind of cool. Cause that like Ghost Ogre is off field. You can use it from field. Um, yeah. So like that's actually like kind of cool. You can use it like that. I mean, Etelly banishes on end phase, so you can't like keep it as a as a hand trap. But still, like it, it's really cool. It can be an extender or like you know an interrupt on your turn. If you're against a deck, like say you're against Striker, they go place multi roll. You could chain your uh, Etelly, summon the Ogre, and yeah, Ogre is gonna die in the end phase if they don't do anything. But now they're forced to not use multi roll pop, which is going to like put you in a position where you basically resolved it. Right, and a lot of the time, like they kind of need that. Like they need to hit their area zero off of the like pop it off the multi roll to play, and then you're just yeah, even start playing. Now you can't play. Yeah, that is cool. It is true. Um, so are you saying situationally good? Yeah, and I think it would be lower if it wasn't a psychic. I think. That utility makes it pretty strong. That's fair. It's also level three and and and, uh, and a tuner. So like it has other like additional like applications. Adi- like it's also a card that as you learn more about the interactions with it, it gets a little stronger. Like if you're playing the striker deck, for example, there's an interaction where you activate area zero, and I think ogre can kill your own cards. So you activate area zero, chain ogre to destroy the area zero. You get a ray. And now ogre worked like an MST as a starter. Right. Also, if you're against a deck that makes like Appaloosa and then puts up like a board, if you open Ghost Ogre Nibiru, the Ogre works like Imperm Valor would because like they make Appaloosa, they feel safe, they do their full right, combo, and then, you pop it. and then you nib them and then they uh, Appaloosa and you chain pop. Now they can't reduce the attack because it's not there, mm-hmm. and then your nib is gonna resolve. Well, it's um, 
it's a it's a once per chain too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah, that so just like breaks right through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's it, solid. Like, it also becomes better the more hand traps you play because of interactions like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Ghost Bell is an odd one. That could uh, so like I would almost venture to say it's not good right now. Um, that card's insane. Like that card has a lot of applications in a lot of metas. It hits Nadir Servant. It hits Eldlixer. Um, it has it has just so many things. It's insane against Prank. Uh, it's probably solid against Virtual World. Um, you can Dude, like hit honestly, like Cloud I Castle. Maybe you should see more play right now. Honestly, yeah, it hits just about I'm every deck. It hits. It's good against Drytron too. So like that, honestly, just hit, hits an incredible amount of cards in the format. Is that card super? I kind of want it now that I'm thinking. I about um, it. I think it's ultra rare. Just about every um Dang. Ghost Girl is ultra rare. I know Ghost Ogre was also ultra rare. That card, like. With like the decks that are very represented right now, it's really strong because it, it does it stops the sanguine against the striker deck. It stops Ray from coming back or, or it can stop the area not the area zero the uh I think the it would does it stop multi roll I don't know the wording on that card. Um, I think it sets from graveyard, so it wouldn't stop it. Right, uh, you can chain it to cards like uh snow to stop snow. Yeah, and it's banish like, is cost like right, three. but that's like kind of bad. Usually, because usually they just, like, banish a bunch of thunders and stuff. Yeah, and get effects. Yeah. So that card is, like, maybe niche. I don't know. I would almost, uh. like, I think probably situationally good. Like, because that card's, fair. like, insanely powerful when it's actually good. And the fact that it hits, like, Nadir Servant and Eldlixer, like, it just, it has Revolt. an app. Oh, it hits Revolt. It has an Hold application and nearly, it stops your opponent from stopping Maxi. That's insane. Yeah, That's actually, like, crazy. It has a lot of applications. Like, that card probably should see more play, but, like, it's it's kind of it's weird expensive. to main that card. It is also very expensive, and I think if you're getting, like, ultra-rare hand traps, you're probably getting, like, Imperm and Effect yeah, Veiler yeah. and stuff over it. Well, obviously, Are the Ash and Max C first, too? but... Yeah, Imperm and Veiler are all, both yeah. ultra-rare. Yeah, it's it's Every expensive. The staples are expensive. Um, that's another reason. That's actually the next card, um, Skullmeister. That's uh, something I was going to bring up because that's super rare. And same with Gamma. They're both super rare. So those are like solid budget hand traps that a lot of decks could like play. Gamma, oh, I would probably call Gamma really good. The big downside is that you two. have to play the driver. The card's also limited to two. but Playing two feels like, bad. It stops Max C if they use it in a spot where you could chain the Gamma. It, right, you like, go like Italy and they go Max C, then you can Gamma, and that's that would be phenomenal. It's at worst situationally good because it's insane in decks like a, like my 60-card deck. You activate Brass and they chain Ash. You chain Gamma, you win the game. Mm-hmm. You activate like Chaos Space, they Ash, you win the game. You activate a Danger, they Max C, you chain, you win the game. And like in those decks... You summon the two and the six, and then you make Chaos Ruler, and you, like, literally resolving Gamma is almost an FTK. You it's, get Lights and Grave, you combo. get a it's, huge it's level phenomenal. Eight. You hit yeah, Snows, it's... Chaos Spaces, you're just like, <laughs> like, okay. And the card that you forced to resolve was so impactful that they shotgunned a hand trap against it. So, like, you're also going to still get that value. Yeah. It's, like, I almost, if it was at three, I would definitely put it in really good. But the fact that it's two, and you have to play a brick for it, it, it it almost makes it like a little worse, like like a significant worse, because like you have thirty three percent less of it in your deck. I was theory crafting that if you play the two gamma, there might be a case to also play one delta. You were talking to I me about like this the other around day. with that idea. Yeah, I it I get it. Like, like it makes it, that's a spell one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that like it, it makes sense because you correct. might as well add it anyway. It's weird. Gamma's weird. Also, um, one additional thing. I know I keep talking about VW, but like. I love that deck. You love that deck? Uh, and, uh, but, like, it's cool because if you hit um, the driver, you can put it back with Yan Yan and, like, live it back yeah, up again, really which is actually cool. And then uh, – And if you – go ahead. Uh, you can just also just put it back. If you already use it and it's banished, you can also just put it to the graveyard with Shen Shen, which is cool. And if you resolve the gamma on your turn, you can overlay with driver in that matchup. Yeah. Yeah, you really also, could. You can make it, uh, it M7 and, and add real... back a hand trap. Like, it's crazy. It came up for me and, like – and tcg before where uh i made i resolved the gamma and i used the driver for an xyz and then i made a stardust charge warrior and sank the charge warrior and the gamma for crystal wing oh jeez. yeah so gamma is occasionally an extender because crystal That's wing crazy. takes a tuner and a non-tuner synchro mm-hmm. 
So you I only know that because of my that. cube. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever summoned it off Zulkin, like IRL. Me, People used to do it with, like the Wind Witch, but I didn't really play oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, when yeah, Wind Witch was too. like actually good. Like it was a cool engine, and I uh, pl I was playing like I remember when Legacy of the Duelist came out. I made a Dark Magician Wind Witch deck on there because that's all I pulled. <laughs> I pulled the entire engine and uh, the whole Dark Magician engine. I was like, what can I add to this to make it like close to a real deck? And then like the Wind Witch engine. I was like, oh, these cards are good. <laughs> what a weird combination. It was, I guess they're it was all not good. Right? <laughs> they were all spellcasters, yeah. No, that was like super casual. That was I wasn't even a cat. Well, I guess I technically was a casual because I didn't play real game at that time. So I was like, kind of casual but i just pulled it all you know that's what i made it but yeah it was cool um yeah where, where would you put the skullmeister i'm, I'm i'd probably sure say on um one. honestly i'd say not good enough maybe not good right now because the card is good uh but like like it comes up sometimes in uh in real Yu Gi Oh, and i'd probably put it at not good right now but it's not nearly as good as the other two cards in not good right now which is mm -hmm. kind of weird but i still feel like that's a fair place to put it because it, it's it, not it as is good, good. But it's more versatile. Like it, yeah. It would probably have an impact in every matchup, whereas the other two that are in not good right now aren't going to have an impact in a lot of matchups. Right. Like, yeah. Again, the um, other cards are more of like, like a Eldritch. sidey thing, and so Skullmeister you could actually play in the main. Yeah, that's a card that you do main in formats where it's like worth it to main. I right. just don't think this is that format yet. Yeah, I agree. Well, also, the format still has a lot of developing to do, especially with what we were talking about with just like rarities and budget in general. Uh, yeah, everybody's on a budget a in this to, game. The format has a really a lot of room that it could increase and, and change. What are your thoughts on Monster Reborn? I think that card's free, so it that is card like is free, um, available to everybody. I I would say situationally good. I think it's good in like certain decks. Uh, it's really cool. Um, I mean, like imagine like in the Sky Striker Mirror, you bring back Kagari, and you're like, oh, mm, like I'm tall. Matt was telling me that like. <laughs> People try to play around it still. I oh, yeah, think like, only, only like summoned it off Ray? Yeah, that way you can't get it uh, summoned off the, uh, what's it called, the anchor. Yeah, that's weird, though, because, like, you usually go um for, like, the Hayate play, like, going for, like going second, turn one, you go Hayate They don't do it anymore because Kagari's, Kagari's at one. They avoid oh, really? that line because Kagari's at one. You kind of want to save it till it will be the most impactful. Gotcha. That makes sense. I, I get that. Yeah, because if you don't have three spells already in Grave, it's, uh, it's not going to be, like worth it to give that also like uh heat a staple to to a, a sky shaker's extra deck and uh mm -hmm. if you make kagari like actually make it turn one then it, it is really susceptible to like hita or like cards like monster reborn and stuff so that makes sense it, monster reborn can be a strong extender in a lot of decks too like in striker you can use it to summon like even on the mirror match you could summon like their hand traps to combo matt was saying that he summons big beaters sometimes just to like go for games yeah because access then, is 53 so like if you can summon a 3k guy you're just winning anyway yeah and and like my thunder deck i had a hand the other day where i didn't have like a crazy combo but i had thunder dragon and i had monster reborn so i thunder dragon search two thunder dragon monster oh, especially reborn, back in colossus Reef. Yeah, yeah, that's make good. Colossus. That is and good. And that card is so high impact that I, a Monster Reborn is insane in that deck. Plus, if like I mill something good, just bring it back, and I could do a full combo off that. Mm -hmm. I would call and it situationally good. Well. I, I think it's good sometimes. And also, um, in Prank, it's a really good uh, extender. If you get Ashed on your first Prank, you can bring it back and then go into Cockadoodle Do and then like play. So Ooh, that's true too. That's I would really definitely, I would call it. I like it's almost like situationally good because it's it's really like we talked about it being good in three decks, but it can be like a solid, you know, extender in a lot of other decks, like just about any and it's free. like real that's deck. A big thing. And it's free. That means right now I would like. I mean, I I was putting it into everything at first, um, you know, and on uh, like it it is free. Like that that's really like such a big deal. So like we could call it really good, but like. It's it's like not really good always. Budget, it's probably really good, but for the if your deck is finished, you're probably not playing it. Yeah, I think Unless I think this is more objective, less about budget. Um, but budget's definitely something to take into account. Mm -hmm. For sure, it's a good but talking point. I'd like say situationally good's probably fair. Do you think it deserves really good? Nah, I'd, I'd probably agree with okay. it there. In my right, deck, cool. it's really good, but that's what makes it situationally exactly. good. Exactly. Really good in my deck. Exactly, yeah. Um, Pankratops is a cool card. 
Um, I, I think, think kinda that's niche. another situational. Uh, yeah, yeah, niche. Um, because it's really only going to be in blind second. Like you're only going to play that blind second or in dino. I'm assuming it's still at one, right? I think so. I'm more? pretty sure it's a one. If it was at three, that I would want to play that in blind second for sure. Uh, if I was playing, uh, also I, th- I unfortunately I think it's an ultra rare, um, which makes it, if it is at three, <laughs> blind oh. second strategy is super expensive. Um, but yeah, like we were right, saying, we're not trying to expensive. budget it, like add budget in too much. But it is definitely a relevant point, is that it's mm-hmm. expensive. But in, I might be wrong. It might not be an ultra rare. Um, but I, I am fairly certain it's at one in the format. But I, I might we be wrong. Have, we kind of, when we were talking about the hand traps, we skipped over three, technically, that are still down. The there. Lance, the yeah. Card, isn't it? The Lancia and the uh, the guy. What is this Gizmet card? I, f- I forget what this card I does. I forget what it's called, but... Uh, is it, isn't it like yeah, a weird so, normal summon thing? It's, it's got a weird effect that, like, specials a barrier statue from deck. I don't remember the condition at which it summons, but I could pull the card up I think quick. it summons a guy that has equal attack to defense, right? So you make, like, yeah, a barrier so, that's a thousand thousand? Yeah, all the barrier statues are 1k, 1k, so gotcha. that's the practical application of it, is that you, like, summon a barrier statue. But the card, I don't think it would be that good in this format. I don't even think I've considered playing it ever, but this is the first time I've thought about it, so maybe I could read it real quick, though. Uh, each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster, inflict 300 points of damage to them. That's you can neat. only use each of the following effects of Gizmek, Uka, the festive fox of... I can't say this word. Dude, it's Gizmek. <laughs> uh, if a monster special summoned from the d- main deck, except during the damage step, special summon this card from your hand. If this card is normal or special summoned, target a face-up monster your opponent controls. Special a special summon one monster from your hand or deck whose attack equals its own defense with the same attribute. Oh, so that okay. Makes it so really if you play sneaky. in a barrier statue deck, then yeah. you can hit any attribute. But if not. Then, like, imagine playing that in, like, Tri-Brigade to tutor out the, the statue. I, all right, that was a, a, that was a, control, really, that was a really ba- uh, bad example because they would they just, like, summon it off of uh, the link. But, you know, anyway, whatever. You have to be playing – you have to have a target in your deck that matches their attribute. That just sounds bad. Yeah. Cause, like, that uh, card just it, sounds it, bad. It, in a simplified format where there's like one to two decks, it makes sense. Or if there's a side deck, it makes sense. But because like, if you know that everybody's doing the Helk line, every single deck makes a Helky Fibrex to start their play. That's fair. You can play that with the Water Statue, but that's not the case. And the card also requires you to play a Garnet. Is only good going second. Yeah, it's that just... makes sense. So it's only good like, there's just too many like stipulations for that card to be good. And you're also locked under the statue on your turn too, so then you have to like yeah. out your own statue via link summon. It's it's so just you're weird. Garnet in your extra deck. It's really that's really weird. Um, but we got the two big hitters like actually. We got some big hitters here, still. yeah. Um, the, uh, Lancia Nib first. is one. Oh, Lancia Nib first. You said Lancia you choose, first, so we'll do Lancia first. All right, Lancia is one that I think would go in the situational. I think it would go in not good right now. But with it being a light, it kind of changes it for me. Yeah, you because you can grab it off of Chaos. That, yeah, certain decks can chaos just utilize roller. it a lot easier. Plus, we do have Dagda in the game. So, yeah. like, if you're and playing say, it say, in don't... a deck, you could also Dagda it out. Yeah. Huh? I said and Sanctum, but, like, without sideboard, like, it would be kind of weird to main Sanctum. Yeah. That reminds me that one thing I want to consider in this game is, uh, since I'm like going down the 60 card variant with my collection, I kind of want to get a Scythe and a Dagda, and then a Helky Firebrax with the level 5 Synchro that pops. Yeah. That way I could Scythe lock people, because that seems insane going Is first. that the the Wonder Magician, or is that the, the Locust? Yeah, Wonder Magician. Wonder Magician? That yeah, card, yeah, yeah. Level 5 Synchro pops on uh, Spell Trap when it's summoned. Mm-hmm. So against Combo, you pop the Scythe, but against Back Row, if they just set 5... You just leave Scythe set. You banish Pop at one of their back row. In the end phase, Scythe will die from Dagda's effect and come back out anyways. Mm-hmm. Then you, like, pop the back row and have two cards to use for Link material. That's good. Um, yeah, and... I uh, I, I, I kind of think it probably does deserve not good right now because I, I consider it on the same tier, if not, like... Yeah, like probably on the same tier as, like, Droll and Phantasme. Yeah, um, that's what I was thinking. It's just the it could go to niche because very specific yeah, decks yeah, will utilize enough. it. Honestly, it belongs in stuff. both. 
because like it <laughs> it does like fit into certain things um but it's yeah i don't know what do you think you should you think it it belongs in niche I could see it in either, because, like, I have been thinking about getting it myself, because I do think the card in my deck would be really strong. Is it cheap? Especially it's with not the... an ultra, right? It, it's an SR. Cool. So, cool. it's a nice, cheap alternative for a blowout hand trap that, right now, I'm seeing a lot of Eldritch and Ranked. I actually haven't it's played against VW deck, at all yet, and I'm plant two. Really? But... Yeah, but, mm -hmm. like, I've seen a lot of Eldritch, a lot of Striker. It's not good against Striker, but against Eldritch in particular, you can stop their uh, traps from floating for a turn. Yeah. And that usually will give you enough to kill them on the following turn. Not it can buy you a lot. About what they have. It, can it can buy you and, a lot, for sure. And I can add it. And and uh, against that deck, even though I can add a Veiler, Veiler's not really doing anything against them. So having just, like, the option to, like, search that off Ruler is cool yeah. to me that's the um, only reason i would put it in niche for me but for every other deck not good right now yeah um also there's a the cool added synergy where if you play it with like gamma that it doesn't like leave on the on the end oh, phase yeah that is insane in decks that play chaos ruler or any other level eight synchro because mm -hmm. then you just like it's just a free play extenders. and like if you're playing both of those odds are you're playing like at least omega in the extra deck and then you just get a free omega right off rip a hand trap what rarity like, is that card i want it is it it's, UR? it's a you are i believe it's omega it's got to be an ultra rare yeah i don't know fair. for sure but i feel like it's got to be uh, next is uh, Nib. Nib Nib is a weird card. I would call it situationally good. Like, right off rip, I, that's what I would put it. I think me too. As the format develops, I think it's going to move up to really good. Yeah. I think that's a card I really, really stand that you should probably play one of that, depending on With the deck the you're playing. Yeah, it is true, because yeah, if, if you're going, uh, if your opponent's like, they can kill you, but like, the, you know, you draw into the maxi at the end, and it's like, ooh, yikes, I can't really win. like, if your deck is weak, I think you should play it not weak as in like bad but weak as in easy to kill yeah like if if you're playing the vw deck and you get max seed and you're like play as a shen shen and a chuchi you probably don't need the nib like that's gonna be hard to kill through depending on how many cards they drew and if you have hand traps you'll probably be fine but if you're playing just like a lower impact deck that can't do much through max c then i want to have the the like the thing to ensure that i'm not gonna die when they push i know what you mean yeah, it it definitely makes sense. Like I see it a uh, um, you know, I see it being like a reasonable one of in a lot of decks as well. And also um the added uh cross out designator. I think a lot of decks that played triple cross out designator will probably play like one effect veiler, one nit just in case. Yeah, make it their cross out higher impact. Mm -hmm. That way you're not only then, playing like the triple ash, the triple max C, you can also hit these other cards that could still matter. That are like kind of niche but like could still happen. And then Nib is also really sick when it resolves because, like, it's an extender. You get a monster on board, and it's also light, so it can be added off ruler, which is always right. a selling point for me in particular. Yeah, and in uh, when we get DPE, it's like when you after the DPE turn, you draw it for turn the next turn. You summon it off Dasher and then draw from Celestial. Like, it's just it's like it's a three K body for free. That's light and level eight, which are all good things. It's not level it's eight. It's like level eight. ten or it's something. It's like ten or eleven. Yeah, something light. Huge. That's all that mattered though. To what I was saying, light and 3k, like that's just like a big rock to just drop blue on your field. Eyes. Yeah, it's a blue, it's a blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a big man. <laughs> it's a blue eyes that you summon by tributing your opponent's monsters. So they power crap blue eyes, dude. Oh, blue eyes sucks <laughs> now. <laughs> Team Samurai X One's gonna kill us now. <laughs> you like that? I called him his full name with the X One. <laughs> you can't say it without. Dude, if you you got there's other team samurais out there. You yeah, there's probably know you know X two and X three. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Nib's Nib's really good. I feel like situationally good is a, it's a solid place for that card. Um, for now, but that's another card that moves up heavily when uh, a best of three sideboard format. Um, but yeah. you know who knows about that? Who knows if that'll happen and stuff? Um, I, I was tempted to just make this a hand trap tier list, and then I was like, but there's so many like staples. Like I, I feel like that we should just like do the whole thing. I'd be down to do a hand trap tier list sometime. Maybe we could. Maybe we should. Maybe we'll do that on your channel. Something like that on your channel. That'd be sick, so you guys better be over there to see that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely do one on your channel soon. Like, maybe not hand trap, Hell but, yeah. like, some, some kind of video. Um, uh, I guess uh, let's uh, move order? on. Or did you have something else to say? Nah. With uh, order, I think that's a good spot to talk about the emptiness that wasn't on here and also the skill drain. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's um, fair. Skill drain is either situationally good or really good. Card's insane, but... 
you have to be playing a deck that can utilize it. Yeah, it's only really I playing like Danger, Spam, and Eldritch that I can think of. If, Is there anything else? Not prank can, can play it. Of. Prank can play yeah, it. Yeah, Prank plays it really well. Yeah. If I'm playing a, if we're not factoring in budget, then I think that order and emptiness 100 percent should staple, be staple. staple staple. I agree. Yeah, they're, those cards are the best traps. Argue not the highest ordered. impact traps. Yeah, but emptiness you should definitely play the one of in like every deck. I and don't really have any reason to not play those it. cards are insane. Yeah, for sure. Um, the uh, ver here's the emptiness right here. The veritable emptiness. Bolt. Put it up to <laughs> staple staple. Um, but yeah, the uh, Imperial Order, I uh, I think it probably deserves really good over a staple staple because uh, like it's it's another card that's just like bad going second. So of course like blind second won't play it. And then also I don't even know like it's definitely worth playing. And also every combo deck like probably should play it at one in this format just because of the fact that it turns off Droplet, it just turns off um, uh, Dark Ruler, all those cards that like would out your board. So like. Imperial Order is just a fire one of to just slap into decks. It's so insane. It also is just like, is like the buy against Striker and stuff. Like you open that card, you you just win. Yeah, and even if you're going second, that card is insane against them. So what do you think? They, really good like or staple staple? It's really close to staple I, staple. I think you could make the argument for really good, which might push it away from staple staple. But like emptiness, there's. I can't think of a reason you would not put that card in your deck besides you not having it. And yeah. that's the only argument I think I could accept on that card. Because, like, you you open your board, you flip it, you win. Going second, you try to break their board the best you can. You put up a subpar board, but you flip emptiness, you win. Right, yeah, even if you don't end on, like, you know, three negates, you end on, like, two big guys or, like, one big guy, and you just flip emptiness, and you're just like... I wouldn't probably now, right? Realistically, like, if you crack their board, you just need something that would negate a mystical space typhoon type card, and you win. Yeah. Put up a Borload Savage, put that up, pass. It's over. Put up Stardust Spark Dragon in that, and it's over. Yeah, it's it's very, very powerful. Although, um, not many decks are playing cards like that anymore. Um, like the start of, What was the first one you said? Borload Savage. That card's really playing. Yeah. yeah. That'd be really powerful. Yeah, if you can put played. up one Omni Negate on top of or, uh, the Emptiness... I, I it's ra it's wraps right like it's it's just about curtains. The, the reason I bring up Stardust Spark that was like a Hoban thing. Oh, that was gas that... in, the, in the day. I remember that. Like that was really good. I could really see good. that being decent nowadays too, though, because like it still protects order and like th those are also it's just like a really really strong card to be able to protect and be able to protect all the time. And with emptiness, like I, it just seems really really strong. You can also use it on. Wait, how? Never mind. I had a thing to say, but I kind of forgot how it went, so I'm gonna just pretend I didn't. Oh, but you know I, what I just seems interesting. Huh. You know what's something I just thought about? Shen Shen emptiness. Oh yeah, because uh, cards from the field are sent to the grave. <laughs> That's right? correct. So they have to they have to specifically out the uh, Shen Shen. So or the or the, the grave, emptiness. That's like the only out. But anything else on your board, they attack over a weak monster. It let it lets you play too. Like you can activate like desires or something with that on the field. Oh, yeah, that's That's true, kind too. of I crazy. That. I just thought about that. I'm literally, like, Emptiness isn't in my list right now because, like, the deck is just, like, so tight. My I have, like, one one-of spot that I want uh, that I'm using, and it's uh, Feather Duster. But, like, shh. Emptiness, like, deserves it. I don't even have one on that account yet, though. I'm too broke. Uh, there's a lot I want to talk about about VW, but that's for a different day. There's a, like... I'll, I'll just save that thought till we're done. I'll save that thought till we're done. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole yet. All right, we'll, I really like that. All right, deck. We, we can talk about it, it later too, because I also really like that deck. Um, so, but what were you say? Uh, just in regards to the two cards we got left, I think Super Poly's trash. Uh, I the think the format is too diverse right now for that card. That that's and you can't... yeah, that's very true. For it to be good in your deck, your deck has to be a deck that doesn't utilize the extra deck. So at best, it's going to be a niche. Because, like, you're going to have you to play a lot of targets to ensure it's live against everything. Or you have to be playing, like, Hero specifically or Shadal. That, I, that's why I was about to say, make that point. That those two decks, I think, make it niche. But I don't think it could cross niche right now. Yeah, and, like, yeah. and niche is also, like, kind of generous to the card. But, like, looking at the whole niche category, all of these cards are, like, really good. Like, it, when they're good... And, like, Super Poly is really good when it's good. So, I think it's fair. Also, um, just, a, a, like, a notable add-on with Super Poly is um, Droplets is really, like, like one of the only, like, 
Droplets and Darkwell are like the only outs to Herald of Ultimateness, which I think Drytron is one of the best decks, if not the best deck. Um, but Super Poly also outs it in those decks, like the Shadow deck and stuff, and that's like yeah. that like gives it a huge thing. So I, I think Super Poly is like, like it's it's definitely insane in the deck that is good, but it, it doesn't belong in situationally good because not every deck can make it good. I agree now, but I, I think first, Niche is I was fair. Thinking bad as I started talking about it, and you started talking about it. It does make sense at niche i could not see it go up at all i could only see it go down though i wouldn't call it any better than that definitely and even in best of three i, I don't see it really being like much higher than that especially since it's a two which is like kind of weird because you can't really like expect to draw it so then like i would rather probably have like you know a dark ruler or something to out of, out to out of board than super poly like even post side mm -hmm. a lot of the time also, the fact that, like, you have to spend an extra deck slot or two in, like, even if that's in your side deck, that, that means that your super poly package is two cards and you have to side, like, an extra deck card or play one in the extra deck for a two of. It just, like, I don't know. A lot of the time, I feel like it that card is, like, only really good at three a lot of the time. But, like, it's in the decks that... It's engine requirements. Yeah, it takes a lot. It's, like, it has a lot of weird things. But in the decks where it's crazy, like, the Shadow and the Hero we were talking about, the card's, like, phenomenal, like, even in the main. You get the best of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already play the extra deck stuff, so it just is like strong. And like, if you're playing an invoke deck, it helps Alistair dodge Valor Imperm. If you're going, you can second. also kill with it. Like, you can just like attack, 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 attack in damage or in the battle phase. Still, like super poly kill. Like, yeah, for real, that card yeah. is really strong when it's good. Yeah, niche is fair. And judgment being the last one, I think the lowest that card can possibly go is niche, because like it's a three of in every back row deck. So. Uh, so it's, so I have a weird with judgment. So I love judgment because, uh, well, obviously in any backer deck, it's going to be a three of staple to, to out like the feather duster and lightning storm and all these cards that are like the mass removal, but it's also insane in combo decks post side. So obviously that's not here for here, but like, that's another card that in the future is going to be insane. Cause like building an unbreakable board, this card stops droplet. This card stops the, the dark ruler. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes the board truly unbreakable. Yeah, but for now, yeah. definitely, um, I would, I would, I almost want to call it really good just because yeah, of the fact of how good it, it is in the trap decks. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we put, I mean, we put combo, strike up here. It. What do you say? You can still play judgment in a best of one in combo if you're confident in your engine's ability to crack boards. Being yeah. able to crack their board and then establish that is going to give you like immense follow up, and then you also just like get rewarded every time you see it going first. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's solid. Uh, I was playing it in um, my, like, in virtual world at first just because of the fact that, like, you know, budget at first. But, like, mm -hmm. it's a card that if somebody was saying they were playing it, I would be like, okay, you know, that's that's fair. Like, exactly how you were saying. When you go first, it's gas. It's crazy, crazy. They are not outing your VFD. They are not beating you. But going second, like – if you can break a board and with like droplet and stuff, that's so impactful as an addition to a board, like even going second. Yeah. It, like how do they kill you on the crackback? You probably have one or two interruptions or just like floodgate esque monsters. And then they also, they have to have multiple outs to those cards, which is like hard as hell. They've already used most of their cards to develop their board that you broke through. Mm -hmm. Also, like, I think this format, it's a, uh, People in modern Yu-Gi-Oh look at a lot of cards that are like hard going first cards, quote unquote, and don't really like them in the main because you have the option to side them. Right. But we also in the TCG don't have max C. There's going to be a lot of times where you're just resolving a max C against your opponent 40% of the time if you're playing a 40 card deck or maybe a little under like 38% of the time or something. Mm -hmm. You're going to open max C. And then they're not going to put up like this huge board. They're going to put up a little thing and pass. And then even if, they have the max C for you. You're it's still almost like you're going first. Like you're not playing against a lot. You just have to crack this little board, put up like one or two interruptions. If you get max seed, you just have to out their board and you can set your own back row cards to stop it. Right. And then a lot of them the more popular decks don't seem to be very, very fast paced combo decks. So it's okay. Like if I play against your virtual world deck and I open striker judgment going second, may, maybe I can't play. You VFD'd me. But I can just like set a couple back row and then try to use those to stop you from killing me on the follow-up and it's not as bad as it would be to me in modern right yeah i i, I agree yeah i think mm -hmm. uh i think putting it really good is fair but i definitely think like situationally good is is a fair home for it as well
That's I I would be fine with that in situationally good too. I yeah. It's but at that point we should probably put the striker here too. But okay. like, yeah, just because uh like, staple three of in, uh in the trap decks, staple three of in the trap decks. You know what I mean? Strike maybe could be played in others. I don't know. I don't know it which could one be. if I were to. Play. It definitely could be. We'll leave it up there for now because that's where it already was. It's like whatever. But uh but yeah, I think there's a I think there's arguments. I think there's arguments to be made for like both ways. Yeah, because like uh. You play like Tri Brigade, like a lot of like Tri Brigade decks used to play it and stuff, you know? Yeah, Tri Brigade, Striker, stuff like mm -hmm. that can utilize them. The life point cost isn't as high as Judgment. And 15's it's just, not like, bad. Like 15's versatile. like not bad at all. And then it also like, it works going first as another card to stop their outs to Max C. You Max C them, they ask your Max C, you strike that, GG no re. Yeah. So just like extra powerful going first, but I think the reason actually we put strike up top is it's not the worst going second. It helps break the board. Yeah, yeah, right. We were, mainly yeah, in trap decks, but in mid range it will stuff, also yeah. help you crack a board. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. That's all fair. Um, I think. Uh, what do you think for the judgment? Which one? Um, I situational is fine. All right, we'll and I think there. we covered basically every good. card that we didn't see on this list. Also. Yeah, we did. Um, I'm gonna. I have a list of them here. And uh, I'm going to, like, timestamp it right here so that people can, like, hear where we put them. But we're not going to explain it because we already explained it. So I'm just going to say, right. like, where we put each card. But, um, yeah, so we put Skill Drain. We said – did we say Situationally Good or Niche? Uh, I think s Situational. Yeah, because there's a couple more decks that could play it. Not only Back Row, like, not only Eldritch, like, Prank and stuff can play it too. And, yeah, like, Danger, combo Big Combo decks. It. Striker can run the card. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 probably fine at, at uh situationally good. Uh, emptiness was staple staple, um, no doubt. DD Crow, we said was like situationally good, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, grass is greener is uh is niche uh of course, but like really I personally insane and niche. think the card should be staple staple in a format where that card exists. I think everyone that doesn't play it is wrong, but that's a personal opinion and. People, I could see why people would think otherwise, but I think it's the most powerful card ever printed. It's insane. Uh, there's a lot of decks that like just, just like wouldn't really care about it though. Like what? Like all of the decks that just like don't really care. Well, back when we had grass in the format, right? Like back in TCG, card was banned were, before uh, I started playing again, so I don't really have like the best input here. When the format initially started, when we had grass, there were like. 60 card variants that played grass that were just like like hard grass decks like every card that was sent was good stuff like infernoid and stuff but then as the format developed grass was such a powerful card that if you're playing a 40 card deck you're losing to the grass decks like a lot and i guess that's that true resolves, yeah. you lost the game and so decks fantastic. were starting to simply play 50 to 60 cards anyways and then we started seeing decks that you wouldn't expect to want to play grass building their decks bigger as a counter to grass but then also playing grass themselves with like payoffs an example is like paleozoic used to play it you would yeah. only think that that trap deck would go to 60 cards but they hopped up to 60 put in three grass they didn't play the uh, left arm offering though gotcha. and then would just like be able to play more draw cards and stuff like uh, if i played a virtual world deck i would probably play like at least i'd try it because i have the stuff already like a 50 to 60 card build where i'm playing the desires and also playing prosperity and then playing grass and then just like playing more good staples. And then if you balance your ratio of like consistency cards to like uh, hand traps and stuff, you should draw relatively similar, even though your hands are big or your decks bigger. Yeah. It, you still opinion. have to have a big engine though. Cause like in virtual world, like that's kind of a problem sometimes is like only drawing one to two engine cards and not being able to like, play that. You probably team. max out on Nian Yan and Tao Tao too, to have a little more engine. And then I guess that's long, true. So that you're milling it more often. Well, I'm and already maxed I, on all those cards except two, two. In this hypothetical Wait, yeah, 60 yeah. card, I'd like probably try right Foolish Burial Goods also. I don't know, though. Like this, I'd probably metal. I've already been thinking about that card. That card's good. The uh, Foolish Burial Goods? Yeah, it just unbricks you. If you don't play a second pot card, I think you should probably play that. But when I played VW in the TCG, I'm playing two pops no matter what. Like, gotcha. either Desires. I'm playing either Desires Prosperity or Prosperity Extrav. But your build has to be tailored for Extrav. Yeah, and in this I'm format not with VFP, extra. you don't play Extrav. You definitely wouldn't. But um, I would def I think I would be playing Prosperity and Desires in the current builds in this game. 
That's fair. I might test some prosperity then. Uh, I you do, have it already, I like, right? No, I haven't been playing. Pro I, I only play Desires. Oh, I thought you had it for trap decks. Like, you owned it. Uh, prosperity is a super. I, like, I can I can copy any amount of the supers, yeah, yeah, yeah. basically. But, um, if you test it, let me know how it goes for you, because I like that card yeah, a lot. It turns I will. off uh, the draw extra deck cards, but if you're resolving that card, you weren't playing anyways, and now you're playing. Right. And if you want to use a combo where you charge warrior and uh, coral, you could just hold the pot as discard fodder or follow-up. But it yeah. also is going to let you dig for the cards to stop Max C, and so that makes it really powerful too. That is powerful. Um, let's finish off this list real quick and then end the video because we're already at oh, yeah, an yeah. hour and Mark a half. Oh, yeah, going on a yeah. grass tangent. Love that uh, card. It's all good. Um, it's cross niche. out. It's niche. Yeah, it, yeah, I'd give it niche, but uh, as the format develops, I am curious to see how it goes because, like I said, I didn't play um, when it was at three in the past, so... Uh, I mean, my only duel, my uh, my only grass knowledge is from Duel Links, and uh, that's thirty cards to twenty. So like, when you can double <laughs> the payoff of grass, like, yeah, it's a it's it's a lot more powerful than it was in Duel Links. Um, also, there was never really a Duel Links deck that could take advantage of it nearly as strong as anything that took advantage of it in the TCG. I would imagine. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, next was Cross Out. We give that really good. Um, it's yeah, definitely really good. Uh, situationally good. Like I think it's just I, I think it's so powerful it's it's really good. Um Max C we gave staple staple, no doubt. Chalice we gave really good. That's like yeah, really good for sure. And when uh when we get DPE, the chalice stonks are gonna go up even more because it, it's like the only out to the to the um the scythe stuff. Yeah, it's like that's it's really a lower good. cost out too than droplet is. Both right. like it's a cheaper card to get and also you invest You don't have to spend any other cards. Play. Right. It's really good. Uh, next was duality. Did we say niche? Probably niche, yeah. right? Yeah, niche sounds right for that. Uh, card of demise was also niche, I think, or was that? No, that was situationally that, good. With uh, that's extra probably half. situationally good. It's the yeah. same nicheness as duality, but a little more decks can play it, and the payoff is way higher. Yeah, it, that card's phenomenal. Um, and then twin twisters was the last one. What do we give that? Situationally good or niche? Well, wherever cosmic is, it's either at cosmics or one below it. So okay, I, yeah, it was situational. Good. Yep. All right. Um, well, I, that just about does it uh, for the video. And we're at an hour and a half, so I'm going to end this this podcast off now. <laughs> <laughs> whole, a whole ass movie. <laughs> but, uh, it was a good movie, though. Glad uh, you guys watched yeah. it. Yeah, glad you Make watched sure it. Make sure you subscribe to Nostalgia to see more movies. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Go over to Zade's channel. Show some love. Give him some subscribe. Let's hit a K together. Let's both hit a K. Ooh, We're at the, like the exact same number right now. So let's get this going. And uh, don't forget, um, like, comment, subscribe. I just said that. I don't know why I'm saying it a second time. So they don't uh, forget. Dog. So they don't forget. And uh, also, TCG Player affiliate link in the description down below. If, you, if you're going to get cards, use that link. Uh, anyway, it costs you nothing extra, and it supports the channel directly. Banless right around the corner. Banless right need around the deck. corner. 8% well. buyback coming this weekend on TCG on the 28th, whatever that day is, 26th, whatever that day. What are those days? <laughs> There's a TCG. You guys know. If you know, you know. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good week. Goodbye.